One minute you're a hot, horny, pregnant woman, and the next you're a tired mom who'd rather sleep than have sex. The only thing that daddy's scoring is your kid's soccer game. No more butt grabs during diaper changes. Mommy's got a headache, and it's gonna take a lot more than an aspirin to fix it. I'm Kristen Chase. I'm a blogger. A mom of four. A mominatrix. And your host for the Kristen Chase Show. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Now you're going to want to go get your husband for this one because today we're talking about sex and the challenges of having it after you have kids. I am so happy to welcome Andrea Sirtash, relationship expert and author of Cheat on Your Husband with your husband. Hey, Andrea. <laughs> Hi. Well, it's obvious we've had sex because we've got kids <laughs> running around, but still we're using this code word, you know, mommy's got a headache, when it's so hard for us to be frank or, or forward about it. Yeah, we get really shy to talk about sex, which is crazy because we share everything with our partners, yeah. but like anything in marriage, sex needs to be communicated and negotiated. And that's perfect because today we're going to open up the communication for all the moms and dads out there with my list to help decode what mommy's got a headache really means. First up, I'm tired. Okay, so this is a huge one for moms, and I'm kind of hoping you have a magic wand <laughs> that can give us all more sleep. Uh, I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you can, the least you can tell us that it is a valid reason. It's absolutely a valid reason, but to my point before, you need to communicate this. So instead of just rejecting all advances, you might want to say to your husband, listen, honey, I am not going to be responsive when I'm falling over, so exhausted, <laughs> falling asleep, just so you know, you're going to get rejected. I'm much more likely to respond if, and then suggest a time you're more likely to want to have sex, maybe when the kids are napping or another time. Next, it hurts. All right, so this is really common for a lot of women, but it's so hard to communicate without the other person taking offense to it. Absolutely, well that's the key point, because if you're gonna spring it on your husband in the bedroom when he's making a sexual advance, yeah, no. it's not gonna go over <laughs> so timing. well. So really important to communicate it outside the bedroom, explain that it's a physical issue, that you wanna be close, that you wanna be intimate, but the more he understands it's not personal, the better. Now why is it so hard for women to take the time to go see their OB or their midwife if they are having pain? I think we try to be super women and we just want to do it all and take care of everything, but we need to recognize these things because it's not helping anyone. It's not helping you, it's not helping your husband or your family if you ignore your own needs and your own health. And oftentimes it can be a really simple fix. So I'm a big proponent about scheduling sex, and I know a lot of people say, well, that's not romantic, but really, it get can be the best thing. Get over it, get over it if you don't think it's romantic, <laughs> because it's better to schedule it than to not have it. <laughs> I cannot I stress that enough. <laughs> and the thing is, I, I always say plan to be spontaneous. So you might you know, structure the time on Tuesday night, we're gonna get it on, but you can still have fun and flirt leading up to it. You can let loose in the bedroom. It doesn't mean that the act of sex has to be so structured. Well, and at least you know it's going to happen and you can prepare. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. I'm bored. Now, we're mm. not saying run out and go find yourself another man or two, but we are saying that it's possible that things have gotten a little old and you need to spice things up. Of course. You know, marriage is a choice you have to make every day. And relationships are work, but some of the work of a relationship is keeping it fun flirty, fresh, connected, all these things that we don't realize, that's part of the work. So never say you're bored. I hope everyone knows that. Uh, and really, it's about keeping the spark alive by initiating new things together, novel experiences. And that falls on you, not just your husband. Now, if you want to spice things up and you don't have a huge budget, you don't want to run out and buy all these crazy toys and contraptions, <laughs> What are some things that moms and dads can find around the house or you know, change up around the house that might help a little? Well, you know, believe it or not, I interviewed a mother for my book who said the hottest thing that her and her husband do, they go into the closet. I and, love the closet. Uh, my closet is so small, <laughs> that would not be hot. But it's, I guess, a walk-in closet. And it's like their own little sassy tradition. And the kids don't come in, you know. They, and it's really dark. It's so really you can't dark. can't see and, any of the so roles. It's just, yeah. I, Absolutely. It. <laughs> it's about getting outside your comfort zone, outside of your routine occasionally, and you'll see it will inject some excitement. 
Note to self, maybe I need to let my husband know that the best kind of foreplay is just giving me a little room to breathe. Okay, so the bottom line is, Andrea, if you're not making time for sex, it's never gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna find time, you have to make True. time. And you know, I interviewed so many women who said there's no time for sex, but admitted to Facebooking an hour <gasps> before bed. Ooh, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, we're not just doing it for our partner's sake. Sex is pleasurable, it's good for us, so it's important all around. And happy moms make happy kids. Absolutely. Thanks so much to Andrea for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. And thanks to everyone for being here. Now I want to know what your headache is code for. Share it with me in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Cafe Mom Studios on YouTube. See you next time on the next episode of the Kristen Chase Show. All right, so you know, at one point you're nursing them and the next mm -hmm. time they're, they're crying, boobies, boobies. <laughs>